I'm Gretchen Hirsch. I'm a sewing blogger and I write about vintage fashion. Today we're going to be talking about how to add a crinoline ruffle to the lining of a skirt. In the last segment I talked about how to draft a really full circle skirt. So this is a great companion. You could add a lining to that skirt and add a ruffle for fullness. So as an example, let's take a look at this dress over here. Uh, you can see it has a sort of gathered full skirt. This isn't a circle skirt. This is another variation you can do. Uh, it has a lining. And then on the lining, I've attached this silk organza ruffle, which gives the whole dress just a little bit of fullness. Now, I know when people think of 50s fashion, they think of huge skirts, and people usually don't like to wear that for a modern look. So what I've done is just made it slightly full so that you don't feel like you're wearing a costume, but you still get that fun 50s effect. So let's talk about how to add this ruffle to your lining. I'm going to be using tool. Uh, I've picked out a nice stiff tool, not um, that really soft kind that you find in the store sometimes. You want something that has just a little bit of body to it. And I'm going to be doing this on the half scale, so I've made this tiny little skirt lining that I'm going to attach it to. So you'll generally want your tool uh, strip to be about um, six to seven inches wide. I'm on the half scale, so mine is three. I've cut it long enough so that it's 2.5 times the entire circumference of my skirt lining, okay? So we're gonna have it 2.5 times as long and then we're gonna gather it into the skirt to give it that fullness. I've cut the tool and then made it into, seamed it into a big loop like this, okay? So we're gonna need to gather this whole thing. So let's go over to the machine and start gathering. Okay, the important thing about gathering is that you need to have your stitch length as long as possible. So I'm going to switch mine to the longest possible, which is five millimeters on this machine. You're going to do two rows of gathering stitches. The first one I like to do with a half inch seam allowance. The tool is a little bit scratchy, and the great thing about this technique is that it keeps the tool so that it's hidden between the lining and the skirt, so you don't actually feel it scratch against your legs or your stockings or anything like that. And it's important to note that what I'm using a special kind of thread in my upper thread. I'm using a heavy duty thread, which is gonna make the gathering easier. Okay, so I'm using that in the upper thread, and then in my bobbin, I'm just using regular all purpose thread. So we're on our longest stitch length. I am going to start stitching with a half inch seam allowance here. I'm just gonna do a little bit. Obviously, you go around the whole thing, but I'm just gonna show you a little segment here. Uh, I'm going to pull the thread out, leave myself some long thread tails here, and then cut them. Now I'm going to go back and do a second line of gathering stitching. And this one I'm going to do with a quarter inch seam allowance. So it's going to be just a quarter inch away from my first one. So I have two rows of gathering stitches right next to each other. Okay, and same thing, leave yourself a nice long thread tail. And now to pull these up, you're going to hang on to the heavy duty thread, the one that was in the upper thread, and pull it to create those gathers, okay? And the heavy duty thread is great because it's not going to break when I pull it, which can be really frustrating. So that's going to start gathering the tool. I'm going to show you a second method for gathering. This is a really cool thing you can do with a specialty foot called a cording foot and also your heavy duty thread. Okay, so I'm just gonna change my presser foot here real quick. And what's going on is that I have some of this heavy duty thread threaded through a hole in the cording foot. And I'm still using my heavy duty thread in the upper thread, though you don't necessarily need to do that, but I'm just not gonna change it right now. Okay, so I have a spool of my heavy duty thread here. It's going through the gathering foot, I'm sorry, the cording foot. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zigzag over the, uh, the heavy duty thread and then pull it. This is a really cool technique. So what I need to do is set my machine to a zigzag stitch. It needs to be at least four millimeters wide. Uh, it can be a short stitch, I'm on 1.4, that's my length, so that's totally fine. I'm gonna pull the heavy duty thread out from the front of the foot. And now I'm just gonna zigzag over it. And the cool thing about the cording foot is that it holds the heavy duty thread in place, the one that I'm stitching over, so that I'm not gonna accidentally stitch on top of it. I'm gonna stitch to either side of it with the zigzag. Okay, I'm just gonna do a little bit here. And now I can cut. And when I pull this out, I'm gonna cut my thread tails here. 
And what you'll see is this heavy duty thread, that I, the one that I zigzagged over, I can pull it here and it's gonna create gathers uh, using that zigzag and the cording foot. So that's an awesome technique. It's an alternative if you don't wanna do the two rows of gathering stitches. Okay, so now you're gonna obviously go around the entire loop of tool. Let's go over back to the sample here. Now I have uh, gathered up this entire uh, half scale loop of tool and, and I'm gonna pin it to my skirt lining. Okay, you're gonna be pinning to the wrong side of your skirt lining. So this tool is gonna to end up living between the layers of the dress and the skirt lining. So you're not gonna feel it against your skin at all. Now what you wanna do is make sure it's not twisted in any way. And we're gonna pin the tool so that the bottom edge is just flush with the hemmed edge of the lining. I've already hemmed my lining using a narrow hem. And now you're just gonna go around. It's very important that the tool doesn't stick out the bottom of the skirt lining. So you wanna make sure it's exactly lined up or even a little bit shorter is fine. Okay, I'm just gonna do a few pins here, but obviously you're gonna to need to go all the way around. Okay, so here's what we have. We're gonna take this over to the machine and stitch this in place with a straight stitch. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my straight stitch and regular 2.5 millimeter length. Uh, I still have my heavy duty thread in here, which is fine. You probably wanna use all purpose, but uh, just for this short little thing we're gonna be stitching, let's just go ahead and use what's in here. So I'm gonna put this underneath the presser foot. You've got a lot of layers to work with here. And I'm gonna stitch right along my gathering stitches using a, uh, just a permanent straight stitch, okay? So I'm gonna wanna back stitch definitely. And I have two my two rows of gathering stitches here and I'm just stitching along the one that I did at, at uh, half an inch, okay? So let's just do a little bit there so you can get an idea of what this is gonna look like. Okay. So you can see here that in this little section here, that tool is permanently stitched to the skirt lining. And that's gonna create that extra fullness in your dress. So I've used tool on this sample, but there are other fabrics you can use. Let's go look at the dress again on this uh, dress stand over here. Now remember, this has a much softer look, and that's because what I've used on this one is a strip of silk organza rather than tulle. Silk organza is nice because it gives a much softer look. You could also use a cotton organdy. Now the thing about this kind of fabric though is it it does need to be hemmed, okay? So you can use the narrow hemmer foot just like we did in the previous segment. That's great for this. You're gonna to need to hem both sides before you gather it and stitch it on. So this would be a great soft look, especially for something like a prom dress or a wedding dress. This would be really beautiful. So silk organza, cotton organdy, those are both great alternatives. Just remember you have to finish your edges.